Winter was the real killer of World War II. More soldiers, you know, froze to death than died from bullets in certain campaigns. From the Eastern Front to the Ardennes, the cold became a silent enemy that never slept. Fires gave away positions, smoke drew artillery, and the slightest spark could betray a unit's location to the enemy. So how did some soldiers manage to survive nights in sub-zero temperatures without a single flame? The answer lies in a forgotten survival method so effective, it was banned from field manuals after the war. Before we get into how it worked, make sure to subscribe to In the Beginning, where hidden wartime innovations and survival strategies are brought back from the pages of history. The problem was not just the cold, it was the inability to make fire. Fire was warmth, comfort and safety, but also death if spotted. During winter operations like the Battle of the Bulge or the Siege of Leningrad, even a faint glow could attract enemy attention. Soldiers couldn't risk building fires, yet without them, frostbite and hypothermia set in within hours. The army experimented with chemical hand warmers, heated canteens and body oils, but none worked reliably. The human body loses heat rapidly through contact with the ground, which pulls warmth away faster than air. The key wasn't in heating the air, it was in stopping that heat loss altogether. The solution came from Finnish and Soviet soldiers who mastered ground insulation. On the Eastern Front, temperatures dropped below minus 30 degrees Celsius, yet reports told of Soviet units sleeping in trenches or snow burrows without fire. Their secret was a primitive but genius insulation technique built entirely from the earth itself. Soldiers layered dry moss, straw, leaves and even bark beneath and around them, forming what they called dead air pockets. These layers trapped still air, the best natural insulator there is, and prevented heat from escaping into the frozen ground. It was a technique borrowed from Finnish reindeer herders and Arctic hunters who had lived in similar conditions for centuries. The method was brutally simple. You built a bed, not a fire. If you had straw, moss or dry foliage, you stacked it thick, at least twenty centimetres deep. If none was available, you dug into the snow itself, forming a pit just large enough for your body, lined it with pine branches and sealed the top with your coat or tarp. The snow, paradoxically, acted as insulation, keeping body heat trapped inside. The earth cocoon method, you know, actually evolved into a formal survival tactic. German and Allied soldiers soon adapted versions of this earth cocoon trick, especially during those static winter fronts. A soldier would dig a shallow trench, roughly body length, line it with dry vegetation or even spare clothing, and then cover the top with a waxed poncho, tarp or blanket, leaving only a small ventilation slit. Within just a few minutes, the space inside could warm to nearly 10 degrees Celsius, entirely from body heat. Some manuals from the Finnish Winter War even documented soldiers sleeping in open snowfields using nothing but snow-packed walls, moss bedding and a sealed cover. The key principle was conservation of energy, not generation. When you have no fuel to burn, you turn your own body into the heat source and build a micro-environment to retain that heat. Clay and ash, interestingly enough, played a surprising role in the advanced version of the trick. In some World War II reports from the Eastern and Balkan fronts, soldiers improved this setup using clay and ash insulation. When available, they mixed fine clay soil with wood ash or sand 
and spread a thin layer beneath their bedding. Clay, when dry, reflected radiant body heat back upward, while ash absorbed moisture and kept the ground layer from freezing solid. Together they acted as a primitive thermal barrier, rather like a natural heat shield. Units that adopted this practice reported remarkable differences. In one Soviet engineering regiment near Novgorod in 1943, soldiers sleeping in insulated ground nests showed fewer frostbite cases and recovered strength faster than those in tents heated by stoves. It wasn't magic. It was physics. The ash clay mixture blocked conduction, the straw held air pockets, and the snow around it sealed the structure against wind. The method worked because it followed natural thermal laws. Body heat loss happens in three ways. Conduction, which is contact with cold surfaces, convection, where heat is carried away by air, and radiation, meaning loss of infrared energy to surroundings. This World War II method reduced all three. The straw or moss broke conduction, the sealed tarp stopped convection, and the clay ash base reflected radiant heat. The result was a self-warming cocoon that stabilized internal temperature without a spark. Modern survivalists who have recreated this technique report that even in minus 15 degrees Celsius weather, a properly insulated ground shelter can stay above freezing inside. The process is simple but precise. Dig a shallow trench about six inches deep, lay four to six inches of dry plant material, add a layer of ash or soil if available, and then seal the top. In about 20 minutes, the body's own heat transforms the interior into a livable pocket. You know, the same principle can still save lives today. While uh, modern campers might rely on synthetic sleeping pads, the science really hasn't changed at all. Insulation from the ground, that's the difference between comfort and hypothermia. In an emergency, replicating the World War II technique is actually pretty straightforward and, importantly, requires no modern gear. Just collect any dry vegetation or debris you can find, form a raised bedding platform, and cover it with something waterproof. If possible, add a thin layer of clay, ash, or even dry dirt beneath to block out the ground chill. And for long-term use, dig into the snow or soil to create a windproof shelter. These days, some modern preppers have adapted this old system by lining survival trenches or shelters with straw bales or sawdust, which mimic the same air pocket insulation. Others, well, they use modern equivalents, like wool blankets, mixed with dried leaves to replicate the same structure. The physics and the survival benefit remain absolutely identical to what saved countless World War II soldiers from freezing to death. What's truly remarkable about this, um, forgotten technique isn't just how effective it was, but how it drew directly from nature and ancient tradition. Long before advanced sleeping bags or reflective foils, people simply knew how to survive through observation and adaptation. Soldiers, cut off from supplies, reverted to primal ingenuity and found that survival didn't depend on fire or comfort, but on understanding how heat moves. In a world that's frankly obsessed with gear and gadgets, the lesson from these soldiers is timeless. Survival starts with what you can build from the earth beneath you. Their solution wasn't elegant, but it worked. Night after night, trench after trench, across some of the coldest fronts in history. 
If you're interested in more real stories of forgotten field craft, survival innovation, and the tactics that kept soldiers alive when modern comfort was impossible, make sure to subscribe to In the Beginning. And do share this video with anyone who believes survival is about tools. Because the men who lived through the coldest war proved that true survival starts with knowledge.